All right, Bree asks, um, okay, the start button doesn't work. Okay, um, it seems as if a small number of sociopaths have dominated all of human history, Hitler, Stalin, etc. Is this true of, uh, would some other person do the same thing? What can we do to expose current and future bad actors? So, I mean, I don't think, that can't be true. First of all, uh, if that were true, then we wouldn't be here, right? It, we wouldn't, we, we'd be, we'd still be in caves or whatever. History has been dominated ultimately by good. Now, too little, too rarely, but uh, what moves the world and what dominates the world is good. Otherwise, again, human life would be short, miserable, pathetic, everything Hobbes thought it was. Um, and I also don't like calling these people sociopaths. Because uh, they are guided by, the, you know, they might be, <laughs> but why bring in psychology into this? They are guided by particular ideas. Um, these ideas have consequences. They are fulfilling those consequences. Uh, and, um, and, and I think it diminishes the role of ideas in what they do by just saying, yeah, there's a bunch of crazy people out there doing horrible things, and somehow they attain power. Somehow they're successful once in a while or dominantly, as, as you might say. No, I mean, for every Hitler and Stalin, there was an America and a, and a Britain that stood up to them and defeated them, and there were good people on that side, not ideal people. Churchill was not ideal, if you know Churchill, but he was good when it came to World War II, and even FDR was good when it came to World War II, at least once the war was declared. Um, and, and uh, uh, you know, even though he was terrible before. Uh, and so... There is good in the world, and good constantly is defeating evil. Notice the good constantly, now, too little, too late, but it does defeat it. Again, otherwise you wouldn't be here. So it, it, it's the way to look at the world is not, unfortunately, we learn history by focusing on all the horrible things that have happened. We don't learn history by focusing on all the great things that happened. But again, there's, put aside politics, for every Hitler and Stalin, there is a, um, there's a Newton, and, uh, and there's, uh, there's a, a, an inventor of the steam engine, and there's an inventor of, of a chip technology, and 99.999% and of all the people who've done great things in the world, you don't, you've never heard of, and they've done phenomenal things. I mean, the story of history is not a story of monsters. It's a story of what's good in humankind. Think of it as a, you know, a giant or a hero, uh, you know, making progress and being stung and set back by gnats. And then occasionally the gnats swarm together, you know, into some giant horror thing, and then he beats it down, but he never gets rid of the gnats. And the question is why? Where are these gnats coming from? Why can't he, you know, get further? And they're a constant presence and they're a problem. But what they are is something that's impeding the the good, um, not some of them are forth. And also I, I really second the why sociopath. I mean, if you're not a licensed clinician, forget the license, because the license is If you're not a like professional clinician, I think you should in general strike words like sociopath and anything that has like a diagnostic flavor from your vocabulary. It's almost everybody uses these words as like fancy ways of saying jerk. But if it's a fancy way of saying jerk, just say jerk. If it's more than jerk or, you know, something a little spicier than that, um, it's because you have some specific scientific theory about what's causing this and how it works and functions. Very likely that theory is false, but if it's true, fine. But you've got to know it, and that's the commitment in using that term. And I have no idea if Hitler had this or that diagnosis, or even if the diagnoses are valid. Um, and then in any case, what Hitler was not of particular um, impact historically. What was of in, There are always bozos like that around vicious, evil people like that with whatever kind of personality issues he had. What's significant about Germany uh, in that period is not Hitler, but what it was that there let one of those guys come to power as head of the country, whereas usually those guys aren't running a whole country, right? It's the other Germans that are the problem, yep. not Hitler. And what's the cause of the other German? If you want to look for your grand evil figures in history, it's the people who are propagating the worst ideas. So Kant, not Hitler. But it's it's how they came to power. And even about Kant, you want to know, like, why was that influential? Um, why do these bad ideas, uh, if you know, take Kant as the source, and we're not arguing for that now, but of the source of some of the ideas that led to 
to the modern problems, it's not just he came out of nowhere. Like, why were those ideas influential? You want to think about, like, what is it that people are doing uh, in their thinking that, that makes them susceptible to the wrong? And what is it, more importantly, that they're doing when they're being right? And how can we double down on that and excise the wrong? Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brooks Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.